Welcome everybody, thank you for coming. Um, my name is John Neubauer. I'm a Joomla developer and involved in many areas of the community and you'll find me just about all over the place in some aspect or another. Um, this is Tony Davis. He's a, uh, a, another Joomla enthusiast uh, that we've been working together over the last uh, several months. Uh, he brings in a, a very unique perspective, at least from my end, as somebody younger that hasn't been involved in software for that long, um, in, in that you know he's been developing software and the documentation and presentation of documentation to users for much longer than I care to think about. Um, but over the last several months, we've been thinking about uh, the Joomla documentation in general. What is documentation? How does Joomla currently present it? Does that even work for users? And maybe how should we present Joomla documentation? Uh, so what we're going to look at today is some of the problems that we've seen um, in Joomla documentation as it currently stands, um, and, but, but also some proposals of, of how we can move forward uh, and build something that any Joomla user, regardless of their level of experience or expertise, can use at any level and be able to get help uh, in, in Joomla. So, um, skip that one. The first logical question that comes to mind, you know, when you're, when you're starting to look at a broad problem like this, is there even a problem? Um, is there a problem to begin with that needs solved? Uh, personally, I think, we think that, uh, yes, there is. If you look at docs.joomla.org, there's been a lot of effort and a lot of time put into um, creating that documentation, but there, there's, there's still, there's still a, a kind of an abyss, really, of problems that prevent the average Joomla user from being able to use the docs site efficiently. Um, and, and you'll find problems throughout, and, and some of them are just problems of time. You know, when the docs site was set up, it wasn't set up to envision what we have today and, and to accommodate that. And there's many problems. We've listed several here, but I'm sure any, have any of you have used the docs site? I'm sure everybody has. Any, what's the biggest problem for anybody that stands out? Searching. 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 That seems to be the biggest one. Um, you know, so the, I was talk, we were talking to uh, Chris Davenport earlier. Yeah, I know, but I was trying to do that thing there. But uh, we we're, were talking to Chris, and he was saying that he even many times goes to Google to search the docs site. And, you know, it's more functional. But there's, besides search itself, there's a, if you step back and look at the global docs site as a, as a website in general, um, there's lots of problems, you know, and, and there's some, some of them glaring that are present, preventing us from using the Joomla docs site efficiently. And this is the, these are the set of problems that we hope to address and we hope to collaborate with the community and collaborate with you guys in uh, addressing these in the next several months and, and over the next several years, hopefully. Um, what? Right, yes. Uh, so one of the, when we were first coming up with this concept of uh, what are we even looking at here, one of the analogies that we found quite helpful uh, in, in kind of equating the scenario of what we're looking at of what is documentation and what should documentation be is this idea of is Joomla a bike? And uh, Tony's going to take this from here for a little bit. John comes from the technical end of Joomla. The people I work with are, in the main, retired military officers who have a sense of public duty, who work with charities, and who have discovered Joomla, and they use Joomla in order to facilitate their charitable work. They have a class of problems which I think you guys have absolutely no comprehension of because they're much too easy. And I started with the idea of a bike because I wondered whether their development is like trying to ride a bike. And I looked at the history of the bike, and it turns out that bikes were invented not far from here. When was the bike invented? Any guesses? How long ago? Sorry, say again? End of the 1800s. Well, before or after the steam engine? Was the, the bike first and the steam engine later? The steam engine was invented first. George Stevenson invented the steam engine in 1814. He worked in a coal mine and that's used to get coal out of the coal mine. The bike 
was invented in 1816, which is the year of no summer. Huge volcanic eruptions, great ash clouds, North America and Europe, failure of the crops, a third of all the horses died, the gentlemen were unable to go to their appointments with their lady friends, so he invented the Celerifier. About Baron von Dry is about 50 miles away from here. And it wasn't very good. It wasn't a horse. So they invented a horse. And then one that you could pedal, because that made it easier and you kept your feet out of the mud. And fancy ones. And a Frenchman automated it. <laughs> and New York, they had a fire brigade. Somebody decided they wanted a big one. <laughs> This was actually used to advertise tyres, and you can see the name of the tyre on the side there. You can even have one for carrying prisoners. And by 1920, something that we would recognise as a bike arrived and was called the normal bike. The reason it was called the normal bike, because it wasn't in those days the normal bike, this is the ordinary bike which English people call a penny farthing because we used to have a little coin and a big coin. A farthing is a quarter of a penny. Somebody decided to get even faster, rocket-powered bikes, and shortly after the image was taken, the man in the middle killed himself. I don't quite know why I'm not going forward. Nowadays, bicycles come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. This is a child's bike, you just get on and go. But a bicycle like that, anybody can do it. My wife for shopping, my children for riding in the park, somebody who wants to go really fast and be really effective. You can get to be cool and energy efficient. Like the bicycle, Joomla was invented after an explosion in the Mambo community. It now displays many forms, it is still evolving rapidly, and it meets many requirements. You can use it for all kinds of things. You just get on and go. But if you look at a racing bike, there is actually a book which describes to you how to set it up so that you can have it with one configuration if you're doing a race across Holland, and a different configuration if you're going to run in the Pyrenees. Can Joomla documents be like that? We think that there are a number of elements in the documentation. Recipes. You'd like to do something, this is how you do it. Explanations. Which is the best approach? Diagnostics. You get stuck. How do you get out? People with a programmer's approach have a different way of going about it to my retired colonels. And detailed technical stuff for developers. Patients do not want to know how the medicine works. They just want it to work. And sometimes, a bit of a tip, take it after meals and it will be better. Our proposed solution, use Joomla. So th this was kind of our exploration phase and for a large extent we're still in this kind of exploration phase of of you know we've tried to define what is an ideal documentation what does that even mean so that we can then try to meet that requirement um, and uh, one of the things that you know we, we've we've explored kind of uh, what could documentation be what does it mean to the end user and then what should we build to meet that end user uh, so now we're getting to the point where we're looking at okay how are we going to do this uh, currently, as you know, docs.joomla.org is a wiki, and uh, I love wikis. I'm an administrator for Wikipedia, and I edit, edit all kinds of articles there, and I absolutely love wikis. But in the time that I've been in Joomla and working um, with the documentation to some extent and uh, in, in the wiki there, uh, w from our discussions that we've already had, I think that the, the wiki is, is maybe a means to an end, but not necessarily what a... Documentation, a user of the documentation would expect. So, uh, what our uh, thought is, our proposed solution, um, it, to some extent, would be to 
really actually use Joomla. I mean, Joomla is, by the way, a content management system if you hadn't realized that yet. And uh, documentation actually is content. So what better thing to use than Joomla? Um, so uh, part of this is, is um, more of a, a, a thought process as far as a proposal for how to approach documentation. And part of this solution is an actual implementation process. Uh, how do we want to do it? What tools are we going to use to do it? Uh, and in our research and discussion and testing, I really think that Joomla could be an ideal solution and is an ideal solution for presenting the documentation to our end users in a better way. Um, we, can, we can learn from other projects. As Joe kindly pointed out to us at the beginning of the uh, conference here, um, Joomla is not the only open source project out there. Um, what we've looked at many projects. We've looked at Drupal and how they do uh, documentation. We've looked at different, uh, you know, PHP and, and MySQL is one that we looked at. Um, and it has a, uh, maybe not as much of a visual layout as we'd like, but it has some very, uh, it's very clear, it's very structured. Meaning when you're, when you're looking at the documentation, you know exactly what you're looking at. Um, you know exactly what you're looking at in contact with the rest of the documentation, and you know where to go after I, after I master this section, where do I go next? Um, and, and that same structure is then consistent across versions. Uh, the MySQL documentation site supports, I think, five or six different versions of MySQL. We are in the scenario where at any given time we may or may not have up to a maximum of three simultaneous versions that we may need to support. So definitely learning from that. And of course, MySQL, just like Joomla, is a rather large international project. Um, it has users all over the world, as, as we see here. I mean, we're Joomla users, and, and we use MySQL all over the world. Um, and so they're able to present documentation in multiple languages. So we're lowering this barrier for people that actually want to use the software. Um, we always say that Joomla is easy to use, and for us it's easy to use once you get used to it. But it's that getting used to it, that learning curve that many find challenging, and lowering that language barrier by presenting documentation in multiple languages can uh, improve this process of, you know, not only for English speakers, but for everybody else. And as we know, the documentation site right now is currently only in English, what documentation that is there. Um, and so, so here's actually, we're going to look at some of the things that we've noticed in MySQL documentation. So this is actually their, their pretty much their home page for the documentation. And just a couple things that you notice off the start, and we'll kind of equate those to what we would think of in, in Joomla itself. Um, so, you know, up here we have uh, the, the, our, our navigation that is kind of like that top Joomla toolbar. It takes you to other areas of the project. Um, you know, so we've already got that covered. Check that off. Woohoo, we're doing great so far. Uh, we've already got this navigation within the Joomla project so a user can easily connect to different areas. Okay, but this is where the similarities really end <laughs> as far as what Joomla, uh, Joomla documentation covers that um, MySQL does as well. The other things you're going to notice in here, you know, are the different, uh, th you have a, a version specific navigation, so we kind of have a more high level navigation. We also have in section documentation. So once I've finished learning all about this section right here, or I'm on another page, once I'm finished learning about this, there's a logical progression of what I should be going to next next, what I should or can be learning about next, and uh, guiding that user flow. I mean, sometimes, you know, we're in the forums and, you know, you just want to send a user to this one document. And that answers their immediate question. But what about the next question that they haven't asked yet because they don't know to ask it? So providing them a logical navigation um, to get from one page to the next in this workflow is, is very important. Um, uh, when, when, so, so now we've navigated into one of their chapters, and uh, you're, you're going to see similar, a similar structure that kind of just follows down. Um, we've got you know different, different subsections there. You expand that, and you can see a specific section. But all along, you're you're having these elements that um, I call them a workflow. But I mean, it's not necessarily a, a workflow in the sense of uh, maybe a, a production or something like that. But it's it's a reading flow of what should I be going to next, what can I be going to next, what can I learn next. And this is an aspect uh, of Joomla documentation currently that doesn't really exist more because um, 
there's a, there's a general lack of organization that can provide that. If we don't have a strong organizational structure to the content, we can't pro we can't provide that because we don't know what to go next. What is next? There is no organization to the documentation in general. Um, and you know, so we're following this down. This, the same principles that you're going to see again. It, as you go through, you start with high level and keep going through, but it has this consistent structure. So no matter where you are in the documentation, you're going to be able to follow the same workflow to answer your current question and then go to the next question or answer the next question or maybe even just learn about the next topic that you maybe didn't know about. Uh, and I'm sure there's other projects to work from. Um, you know, I, I mostly work in Joomla, well, almost exclusively work in Joomla. But if you, you know, I, I'm sure there are other, we've looked at MySQL here. We've previously looked at uh, Drupal and PHP and some other open source projects to see how do they do documentation. They've been around for a long time. They've probably got to have some good pointers as we've seen here. But I'm sure there are other projects that we can explore. And uh, this is part of this kind of discovery phase that we want to go through with the community of um, what experiences have you seen even in other projects that we can pull from what they've done successfully and really help our Joomla users. Medical examples, please <laughs> Yes. So this is our current Joomla documentation site. And, and in retrospect to what we just looked at in, my, in the MySQL documentation, um, uh, there, there are some, you know, preliminary guides here, and, and unfortunately we don't have the screenshots, you know, that drill down, for example, in the beginner's guide or something like that. But one of the things you're going to notice is, is uh, where do I start? What, what am I going to do first? Okay, so maybe, I'm, maybe I didn't get a, a link to the documentation site from a forum thread. Maybe I, I'm just new to Joomla and I want to learn about it. Where am I going to go first? Okay, so maybe I click on, and uh, for, again, I don't have screenshots of these, but maybe I click on the beginner's guide. Well, there's a subset of about 20 articles that have been manually linked there, so hopefully those are up to date. But after I get through those, now what? Where do I go next? Um, and uh, so, so there's this logical order or workflow that should be happening there that isn't. And some of that, you know, you, you can say, well, that's just we need to redo the home page there. But I, I think it's a, a deeper problem than that. We go, we go back to this whole idea of organization of content. If there's no organizational structure to the content, we can't efficiently navigate through the site in a way that would present this workflow. So there's, that's why we've stepped back and are kind of exploring this idea of documentation in general. Uh, this is something is not quite up to date. We were just throwing this together as kind of an example of maybe what we could be looking at. So you would come to docs.joomla.org. Depending on your language, you've already uh, you're already in your appropriate language, and you're on the home page. You can easily see exactly where you're going um, and, and get there. Um, in 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 the beginning, again, a high level at the, at the version level of what could be a uh, beginning of a learning experience for you. So I don't, um, again, I'm just new to Joomla. I don't really uh, know what I'm looking for, so I need you to tell me what I'm looking for. Tell me what questions I need to answer, even though I don't know them yet. And that's what we aim to achieve here through um, more of a, a more logical thing. And again, using Joomla, we come up with a lot of uh, increased functions. You know, we can imp increase our user experience. I think we'd all agree that a wiki isn't necessarily the best visual layout for documentation or for any reading for that matter. It's really great for collaborating on content. It does that superbly. But the collaborating on content is only the first half. The goal of that collaborating on content is then to present it to a user. And if we're doing that inefficiently, then we've failed at our collaborating process, regardless of how well that worked. So we can improve uh, you know, our, our experience by providing using the Joomla category structure to provide a structure where people can easily navigate through the Joomla documentation and learn about Joomla. We can improve content presentation. Joomla's default templating styles and, and the way templates work in Joomla allow us, allows us to take advantage of that and really present content, even if it's just a, a dry, average documentation article, in a relatively attractive way visually that um, somebody doesn't mind reading four or five articles in a row, you know. Um, but instead, you know, currently you may have somebody that comes to the documentation site and they don't like it, so they go find somebody else's site. Uh, maybe Huggins' site back there, he's got his... Uh, 
his books, they probably end up at his site, and those are great, but as the project ourselves, we have a responsibility to maintain documentation for users. We can present it in multiple languages. With Joomla 2.5, the, the ability to do that is, or, or the, um, the, the cost really in time and effort to do that is really minimized because it's so easy to set that up and once it's set up it's so easy to maintain. With new tools that we've seen come out, we were talking with Vic earlier and we've already tested kind of just kind of looking at you know he's got his Josetta tool that helps us maintain translations and stuff like that and there I'm sure there are, are other tools and there will be other tools built as people take advantage of the multilingual features but being able to present content in really as many languages as we want as many languages as the community demands um, is an enormous step forward regardless of what else happens with the actual content multiple versions Right now, you know, again, back to this organizational structure, and a lot of that revolves around that. Um, it's very hard for us in the wiki to organize content, not only on a specific topic, but across versions. And, uh, you know, there are some tools built into the wiki that I think are actually working against us. For example, one of the things we've had long discussions about is transclusion in a wiki. The idea that you build a block of text here, and a wiki allows you to just use that little block of text. Well, what we've seen, what I've seen as I go through and edit documents is that um, one of two things happens. Somebody goes to edit a document and uh, they open up the edit page and the block of text they saw up there isn't there because it's just transcluded with this little string. So they're left scratching their head wondering what in the world's going on, why isn't this text there? Or they realize, okay, there's this chunk over here that I need to go edit. They go edit it without realizing the, the ramifications that has for all the uses across the site. If this was in 1.7 and um, it was just copied over to 2.5, now we may have changed it for 2.5, but we just broke 1.7 documentation. So um, as much as transclusion may save us a little bit of time right now, I think in the long run it wastes us more time. So there's, but, so, you know, there's tools like that in the wiki that maybe are working to our disadvantage rather than helping us, and those are things that need to be reviewed in uh, how we're going to present our documentation. Uh, we have an improved contributor experience potentially. Um, you know, currently right now one of the common complaints we have our pizza bug and fun events that we've had over the last year or so is, uh, you know, we're working on documentation and I spend more time during those events explaining wiki syntax than I ever do actually doing some of the ta documentation tasks there. Um, in Joomla, everybody that's writing documentation for Joomla has used Joomla. Otherwise they wouldn't be writing documentation for it, even if it's at a basic level. Um, so there's this, there's this learning curve that just disappears. Because everybody knows how to use the editor, whether it's TinyMCE or JCE or whatever else you want to use. Everybody knows how to do that. Everybody knows how to embed a screenshot or add a caption to that screenshot or format the text in, in that to look nice. So we, we, we lower our contributor barriers there um, with, again, like I mentioned, tools that we have the potential to use to facilitate translations. We can invite community members to collaborate with us on presenting documentation in multiple languages. So if anyone wants to work on a language, come on in. Let's work on it. And we just start writing documentation. It's as simple as that. The learning curve for contributing to the documentation goes way down to basically nothing. Because, again, we're using Joomla, and anybody that's writing documentation has used Joomla, so there is no new learning curve to help with documentation. Um, we already mentioned some, some of this, so I'm going to run right over this for time's sake. But we mentioned you know, the idea that we can more easily, you know, just by just copying this over and, and, and uh, uh, maintaining a similar structure, we can easily maintain documentation for multiple, for multiple versions um, and multiple versions across multiple languages. So this ends up kind of being three-dimensional. You have within a version and then the versions and then the languages of versions of documentation. Uh, but you know, so but any given user is only going to see really two dimensions of that. They're going to get into their language page, and that's going to be that. And then they're going to get into the language and just navigate around. Well, I, mean, I think you should point out the key, one of the key benefits of this approach is cloning, so that you go from two point five to three. Right. You would clone all the structure of the English language version into three and all the languages, so that as somebody went through applying the change log in order to update the English 
to the new three level, the people who were translating would have a new version of English, an old version of French, and they'd be able to see the language. So you, what he's saying is using Joomla 2.5's batch processes, uh, you know, um, cloning the documentation is just as easy as it is now, but it keeps an organizational structure, a familiar organizational structure. The same structure we had back here is copied over here. So when a, when a user comes in with a question about 3.0, they use 2.5 and they have a question about 3.0, which undoubtedly that's going to happen. They're still in this familiar structure where they can navigate around. They know exactly where they are. They know exactly what to look at. Um, and, and again, this is... This is mostly focused on the user experience and uh, you know how users interact with Joom the Joomla project itself. Um, you know, going back to the Joomla templating idea, there's there's uh, a better readability. You know, in the wiki, if you have a large screen, you're going like that the entire time because it just goes all the way across. Um, and I don't know any other real uh, you know public websites of any dimension that do that for good reason. There's a reason they don't do that, because it's not really a good reading experience. Um, so why not take advantage of that? Why not take advantage of the tool set that Joomla already gives us and move up to 2012, and uh, as Andrea was saying, how are we going to look like in 2017, and then in 2027, and be able to maintain an up-to-date, attractive documentation site. Um, improved search, here's our favorite one. Um, well, you know, in our experience, my experience personally, smart search maybe isn't an end all to search. Definitely not. There's still some problems that could be worked out there. But I don't think anybody would debate that um, if we just if we just cloned the content to Joomla, indexed it with smart search, and just let it go, it would be much better than it is now. Um, just because uh, uh, just, it's an actual search, it's, it it brings in a set of features that uh, is currently practically unavailable in the wiki, and that's why you see people turning to Google to search the wiki. Um, you know, so there's, a, again, a n more facilities that Joomla Core provides us that with basically no effort or new development by the Joomla community, we can take advantage of by using Joomla as a portal to present the Joomla documentation. Um, uh, Let me go back. That's one of my favorites. I think that somebody who does not have should be able to ask a mildly dozy question and we should be able to be clever enough to look at the question he's typing and say, what about this? What about that? And I don't know whether that can be built in, but if that was able to be built in, that would greatly... If smart search, you do have to have a little bit of knowledge about what you're looking for to ask the right question. I'm trying to help the people who don't have the knowledge to ask the right question. I'm not up to that task. <laughs> um, so, you know, to, to kind of uh, recap before we go on here, I, I, in, in looking at what Joomla currently offers, just out of the box, a default installation of Joomla, what does it offer? I really think that uh, using Joomla as a vehicle to move documentation forward could be a great help to us. Uh, one of the objections, and this isn't in the slides, but one of the objections that we, or the hurdles that we looked at that could potentially be a problem is, okay, what about the editing process? Just because in the wiki, anybody just signs in and they can edit whatever they want. And in Joomla, that ne isn't necessarily the case. Any registered user can't just go edit content. Um, so that's definitely a discussion that needs to happen of how do we want this to work. I would point towards the J to the JCM as a good example of a place that does a good job of reaching out and accepting user contributions while still maintaining an editorial process which affects the quality of it. So we can, we can invite the community to help us and work with us but still um, maintain a high level of quality of our documentation. We can have as much documentation as we want. If it's not correct, if it's factually inaccurate, it does us no good and it does us harm because then we get a bad reputation. Because it's not, oh, so-and-so wrote that. No, it's the Joomla project lied to me. You know, and that's important that we can uh, we can guide and you know we can roll back changes in the wiki and stuff like that. But having a more active process to be able to guide the quality and direction of the documentation is something that I think can can really help users.
Uh, and we talked about some of these other items earlier of being able to very easily upgrade our documentation across versions and being able to, um, you know, using ACL control, okay, we have a set of editors or something like that that may want to, all right, so we have a set of French editors that are focused on specific categories or specific areas of their expertise where they can help maintain and, and really build in that specific area. Um, now, the, the, it would be foolish of us, though, to propose a radical change like this without also looking at the maintenance cost. You know, we always tell our clients, yes, Joomla is free, yes, your initial costs are low, but don't ignore the fact that you are going to have to maintain it. And it's the same thing with here, not necessarily from the software perspective, but from the content perspective, the time it's going to take the community to do it, the, the, the management aspects of the site. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of requirements, as is anywhere in the Joomla community. It's going to take people to step up and say, hey, I'm, I speak French, I'm good at... You know, uh, I, I know a lot about Joomla or this specific area of Joomla, and I'm willing to contribute and help uh, moderate or help pull in contributions from the community into the live set of documentation. And that's important. Hopefully we've made it easier for them to do that. Hopefully we've made their job a lot easier and a lot, um, a lot simpler. And hopefully by doing that, we can lower, again, the barrier for entry and lower the, by lowering those requirements, invite more people and have more people join us since, of course, it's hopefully less work. Um, yes, that, that's one of the biggest areas that we've been looking at because that's one of the enormous steps forward is all of a sudden now we can add languages very easily. All of a sudden we can have complete sets of documentation in a language that was never available before. Um, and uh, so... That's very exciting, but of course it introduces new problems. How do you make sure that uh, you know they're own, they're, re, they're kind of restricted? Not that we want to restrict somebody and say you can't work outside of this area, but to some extent it's only prudent to make sure that um, uh, you know people are restricted to working on uh, approved sections of documentation. You know, you don't. I, as much as I would appreciate their contributions, I may not want somebody um, editing French also editing you know, English or something like that, just because, again, we want some sort of quality control there as far as editing the live set of documentation. So there's a lot of considerations there. And this is where, you know, in a couple minutes when we finish this, it, we would really appreciate uh, feedback, discussion, ideas. There's a million different ways we can go in this. Uh, and what, what areas w should we go in in the next month, in the next six months, in the next year? Where do we want to be in five years? Um, uh, you know, the, there again. Back to our back to our our discussion that we were just talking about about uh, kind of restricting people. We we could define different roles, and again, ACL is perfect for doing this. It does it by default. But clarifying that of you know we have a, just an, a writer, and and they may uh, contribute to different areas, and so you know they have access to contribute to those areas, or a technical writer, maybe somebody that. Um, can 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 review those. Make sure, okay, yes, this is a this is a tutorial maybe, and it generally gets in the right direction. But this is factually inaccurate here. This this box really doesn't act that way. So we need to fix that. Um, you know, we have people that, um, unlike myself, that are really good at making stuff look visually appealing and can make things uh, look really nice and smooth. And that's important too. Uh, a better user experience, as we've seen so much emphasis on for, for Joomla users, is obviously a benefit. Um, you know, we, we'd also, we also see a place for somebody that's maybe interacting in the forums on a regular basis to approach folks and say, hey, I see you regularly advising on this. Would you mind coming and helping us in developing more advanced documentation or more complete documentation on that because you're a subject matter expert. Why not? Um, so, you know, we, we see a, a role for reaching out to the community on an active basis for specific topics and asking them to come contribute. We have a disagreement. The writer, John has just suggested we should be the person who asks the question of freedom because he's a topical expert. I disagree. I think the person who should be writing is the person with the problem because they have an entirely different perspective. And if you come to the problem for the first time, you probably have the voice of somebody else who right. has the problem rather than somebody who is the expert. Right. Sorry. 
No, no problem. And and but as much as that's a disagreement that we've had many long discussions about. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. In my view, the translators have a very important role there. I right. would like the translators to be Joomla newbies, at the, and they are learning about Joomla by doing the translation. Yeah. No? Okay. No, because translating and Joomla is technical translating. You already have to understand the syntax and the, the what that word actually means in order to translate it. You can't just do direct translation. Right. I mean, we're, we're restricting... Right. And, and we have seen that. Again, we, you know, our focus is on kind of the the Joomla.org property, that, that global aspect. Uh, a user that may not know about your community that just happened to find Joomla, um, and they come to docs.joomla.org, they're not going to find any documentation. Eventually, they might hopefully find your community, but, you know, we're, we're, and again, you see, we've seen other advances in that in trying to get local users connected to their local communities. But specifically for the docs.joomla or help.joomla.org site, there is none there. Um, <laughs> Right. But in 25, we still don't have um, one engine to translate to a way to get our health screens on 25. So right. I think this is a very important thing we should also uh, Right. And, and that's where, you know, this is why we wanted to add this as a topic in Jane Beyond, because there's so many facets that maybe we haven't even thought about yet, like we're, yeah. we're coming up with here. This is the first place where I say, oh, okay, there's also a translate document. Right. Yeah. There are lots, there are technical challenges, there are cultural challenges, there are linguistic challenges, there are level challenges, there, you know, kind of, it's just going to be a job of my life. <laughs> but uh, this is really what we're talking about right here. What is the scope of documentation? You know, we, in our collaboration, we've been discussing the specific feature set that we propose for documentation. But there's others that we need to be considering, like the translated help screens and stuff like that. There are other areas that maybe we don't see that uh, we would value community input on, on what should be the scope of documentation. What should it cover? How should it cover? What, what does it need to cover? Um, uh, and, uh, you know, um, we, we've gone over several of these already in, in the, the, the talks that we've already had. But, um, you know, we, we, we talked about um, kind of a more intelligent diagnostic tool for somebody that, again, doesn't know what question to ask. They know they want to get started but doesn't know what question to ask. Or maybe they're trying to get started and they hit a problem, but they don't know what, you know, they don't know. I need to ask a question about modules. But they don't know modules exist or something like that. So how do we tell them that? Or uh, how can we, how can we uh, s to some extent, limited extent, I know we're limited in just what we can do, um, how can we diagnose what they're looking for and give them the best options to solve their problem as quickly as possible? And again, solve that problem within this structure that then facilitates, okay, now you've solved this problem, how about we try this for the next problem that you don't know you have yet, but you will in five minutes. And how about the next problem? And, you know, we th there's potential solutions for all of these. We can use things like tags or something to be able to um, uh, segment topical based, whether it's broad or specific. And, uh, you know, there's there's unlimited or millions of potential combinations of things that you can do when you think of the potential of uh, software or capabilities that we have coming in the future like UCM or something like that where um, you know there there's all kinds of ideas that we can do but we should you know I, I, we were just discussing this last night while something like UCM may be a benefit to us I don't think we should wait for UCM to get started on this because in the meantime 
there's users that are not being able to navigate correctly or thoroughly around the Joomla documentation. The last aspect of, of really maintenance really is the translation aspect. Once we have a solid English version of documentation, um, we would love to get that in other languages and be able to present that to users all over the world. And how do we do that? You know, and uh, you know, we were talking. I can't. What was the statistic you came up with? That how many? I think you got it from you. It's a large percentage of Joomla users that. Yeah, that that English is maybe a second language or a non-language, and uh, for a, for a project like ours to almost. To almost ignore that, I mean, I know there's local communities focusing on it, but for the project itself to uh, not maybe actively but passively ignore that in the fact that we don't have facilities to to uh, have translated documentation, that's huge. That's a large section of our user base that we are potentially alienating. <laughs> Right. I think we should build on that. Absolutely. I think we should build on that. I think you will know of a conversation that you have had, maybe a little Dutch and English, Italian. But if you were a bit weak in Italian, and I'm speaking Italian, it is very helpful in communicating for you to speak a bit of Italian and me to speak a bit of Dutch or English so that we go into our wrong bits. And for that reason, I believe that the documentation for a Frenchman will be benefited if you can translate from English into French, not perfectly, publish it before it's perfect, because an attempt will help them, because it's in something they're very familiar with, rather than waiting for perfection, uh, because if you wait for perfection, you may waste a long time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the translations, again, as we're saying here, should be easy to manage. And, and we're seeing um, folks like the folks from Anything Digital and, and other places like that that are capitalizing on the potential that the new language features give us and providing the community with um, solutions that make it easy to manage. Um, so it should be easy to manage, and it should be eventually presented complete. I mean, I, I, that, that's, that's, a, that's a tall order to present even one language complete, and nevertheless, multiple languages. So, you know, I have no illusions that this, this is not going to be happening like that. But, um, you know, through contributions from the community and inviting those people in their languages to come translate, uh, we can get complete sets of documentations in multiple languages. And again, using the, the language tools that Joomla provides us, um, you know, we're, you know, again, from the time the user types in docs.joomla.org, they're going to hit the site in their own language based on their browser settings, and, and it just goes from there. They're already seeing stuff that's familiar to them, and they, this language barrier is gone, or close to gone, hopefully, in learning about Joomla. Um, oh, went too far there. Went too far back there. So, uh, <laughs> But what we see here on the Joomla help page is that. And this is documentation for Joomla 1.02. Well, we started looking at this after some conversations with Chris Davenport and, and Mark Dexter when we were first looking at this. And their proposal was, okay, we have this help site that's severely out of date. I mean, seriously, what are you saying? This is the Joomla user guide for 1.0.11 on the homepage of help.joomla.org. <laughs> so that's not really a good representation of us. So it's a very severely out of date site. If anything could use updating, it's this too. So uh, the, the thought is, and again, uh, this is still an initial thought, and I'm sure there's a lot more thought that needs to go into it, is to yeah, have a, um, utilize the doc, the, the wiki, to collaborate, um, but use the help site to publish a complete, comprehensive, public uh, uh, interface of the documentation that looks nice, is styled nicely, is great, and include other tools, expand our scope. 
like uh, you know, with with including uh, the diagnostic tools that we're talking about. And again, this is just something that we're throwing together as we're swirling ideas around. Okay, what could this look at look like? You know, a logical um, order to things, something that's up to date and makes sense for Joomla users. Let's them easily find where they're going. Let's them get right to where they need to go. But since we're on the help site now our scope of potential of what we can offer Joomla users is expanded. We can offer things like a diagnostic tool. We can try to bring in other aspects that are help, but not necessarily documentation, and really provide a solution that um, is, is centric on helping Joomla users, no matter what language you're in, no matter what supported version you're in, no matter what you're trying to do, we have an answer of some sort here that's easy to find. Um, and and uh, this is definitely not a finalized solution. This is where you guys come in, and we've already seen some of great ideas here, and this is where the community at large comes in. Um, uh, what, what directions do we need focused on? Obviously, we've been focusing on documentation, and I definitely think that should be a primary focus. But what other areas would help Joomla users gr best in... Um, getting them the information they need to learn about Joomla, to solve their problems, to have a really easy experience in getting started and advancing with Joomla. We assume too much. Should we get back in our box? Should we just stop? My box is small. I don't want to get back in it. <laughs> Do you think we should leave the documentation alone? Or should we go on with this? In my view, we should go on with it. In my view, we've clearly got two big jobs. One is to make a demonstration site that people can look at and say, yes, I think that's okay, I think it would be better if you did this, why don't you have it in pink or green or whatever, uh, those kinds of comments. But the other thing, which is much more involving all of you, is to write the roadmap, because we should make clear to the Joomla technical community what we think about going from 2.5 to 3. What we think about going from English to Polish to Dutch to uh, um, Hindu to whatever, uh, we need to have that put out as this is the way we think we ought to go in order to illustrate to people who might volunteer what the benefit to them and the benefit to the community would be by doing that volunteering work. What are you We have about nine minutes left. Um, so definitely, no, any no, thoughts? Because you, um, the next session is starting. Is it it's coffee. Uh, so it's coffee break. I want you to jump into the music. Uh, so That's just it. Well, well, this is, this is actually part of a proposal. So think about this. 3.0 is going to see a, an enormous amount of changes. We know that. But uh, let's just set the side, aside that it's an enormous amount. What, what's the feature freeze at? How, how long before the... the uh... Technically, we have new features go in um, in July. Okay. So you have the several month period that we already know the scope of what we need to change from 2.5. So if we've done our job with 2.5, we already have this complete set of documentation. Now, by July, we've figured out what we need to modify for that documentation. Okay, so now we can already start working on that as things progress, as bugs are fixed and fi things are finalized and areas are concretely put in for 3.0, we can um, be working on updating that documentation days, weeks before um, the, the software goes live, we can get a last minute uh, change log from the bug squad or whoever is working on that and review it and make sure we've got everything in order so that by the time the software goes live, we already have a live version that's up to date and complete of documentation. That's what I would love to happen. And I think it can if we implement a process that lo that implements a workflow that doesn't put too much burden on somebody like, let's do it all the night before, but can... Set one, good documentation for two points. Yes. Set two, documentation for three, really hard on the heels of the release. Maybe we won't get it so that it's there the same day, but if we got it available within a fortnight of the release, that would be brilliant compared to what else has happened. And I think we can do that. We would best aim for at least a fortnight and see 
see if we talk to in two days. Is it Fortnite two weeks? Yes. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Yes, yes. We need like a, yeah. <laughs> See, that, that's it. I mean, that is translation. Uh, we lived in Australia for a long time. Australia is different. And that's why what she was saying is so important to have experienced Joomla users translating it. Because there's this context that things are said in, in English. And uh, a new Joomla user may not quite understand that context when translating it. They may attempt, you know, just a more direct, literal translation. And it doesn't quite work. <laughs> Us Americans. Right, I mean, we've got screenshots and stuff like that. We've got about two minutes left. Anybody, any, any last thoughts? I guess what I would say is the number of what you're, you're showing here are issues that we have, you know, in the current wiki. But what needs to, what would, what you're proposing for fixes for using Joomla are things that would fix those issues in the wiki. But, but we dis in our initial thoughts about that, the problem that we were running into is that it's you're, you're putting a half a band-aid on it. It doesn't... F it, it doesn't... So the whole version of this whole thing is collaboration stuff. We're not really set up to do that in general. Like what do you mean version... What do you mean? Well, like history, all the... Like, history, right. Right. I know I've spent a lot of time... Well, it, actually, in, in that little site that we threw up, we actually have versioning in there. Very simple extensions that do versioning. It do, I mean, it's not like it, it. It you know, it does basic versioning exactly what a wiki does. You see the differences and can roll back. Yeah, just two points because at the moment I'm using for my book Google because it has all these features. Right. And but this is not the point. And I started to make the content as create comments. And the next step is that I embed a widget so that other sites can embed. Content on their side and looks at it on their side. Yeah. And what I learned is it's only possible with crowdsourcing. It will never work with, with, with a wiki like this. So try to think about crowdsourcing things. Mm -hmm. So so uh, all these simple stuff like how to create a category and these it is right. defined in 500 languages. So find these exactly. stuff. Yeah. And, and that's what we'd love. The benefit case. Yeah. For the member of the crowd to come and join the crowd. Yeah, crowd the crowd is the server of this guy who wrote it, not the wiki. Sure. Because if you if you want to force people to bring their content into the wiki, it's it's well, no problem. It's, it's wonderful, but you will find not that much because they have their day job, especially in different languages, <laughs> especially in I don't know in Hindi mm -hmm. or so. They have other problems than filling the. The, the wiki, but maybe they have an article on their website which, right. let's say, 80% fits the, the topic of the wiki. And actually, I think the, the Joomla documentation license is, is relatively loose in allowing somebody to uh, keep the, the rights to content that they create. But they're and really speaking about rights. Yeah, yeah, okay. really speaking about having any kind of um, external links to other things. They don't want to do that. Right. 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 We're we're actually we're actually out of out of time here. But one of the things I wanted to stress in closing is that this is very very preliminary. I think this is definitely an area that we need to put a lot of focus in because it affects all users, no matter what level you are. At some point, you have a question, and you need help. It affects everybody, whether you're an experienced developer or a beginning user or anywhere in between. But this is a very preliminary discussion that needs a lot of focus. So I, I hope and I would love to connect with some of you folks over the next couple of days and in the next couple of months on ideas and uh, processes. You know, we have, we're proposing Joomla, but that's not an end all. There are problems with it, with just about anything we want to use. Right. Right. But, um, you know, uh, this is something that um, we would love to have collaboration on in the next months, in the next years. I would I'd love to see something come together, and it, it's a tall order, but something come together to uh, in, in this line of thought by 3.0. Um, and, and maybe it can happen, maybe it can't, but this is where... What? That seems awfully quick. 
Right, it does, but uh, th- that depends on the enthusiasm. I mean, I, for most folks we've talked to have been very interested in in that idea. Um, if we can get enough people, I don't see why not. But it's a problem of getting enough people, right? So thank you very much for coming. Two bucks. I did think about doing it in Drupal because it's easy to do it in Drupal, but I thought that wouldn't be a problem. My story was different. Second, the second thing is if this documentation works in Joomla for Joomla, that's a wonderful sales message to using Joomla for other documentation sites, intranets, these electrical machine manufacturers, all those kinds of people. We'd be eating our own dog food. <laughs> but, by the way, but that would force us to improve. With C blocks, CCK, at, at the moment I'm trying to transfer it from Drupal to C blocks. Okay. It has all of these yeah. features, and of course, it's just a question of time. Yeah. But you know, you you mentioned you know it, it would we, we have to live with our own shortcomings. Well, that would force us to innovate and come up with solutions for our own shortcomings. So thank you very much for coming, guys. Thank you.